we start with classic Queen of England, Anne Boleyn. What? Facing the Executioner's Axe. Before we cut to the opening credits and a shit ton of backstory exposition via lazy title cards. Where we find out it's currently ye olde England in 1536. And this show is a dramatised soap opera about the real life Anne Boleyn. Who's now been randomly race swapped because reasons. So she's apparently been queen for two and a half years. But so far has only managed to pop out a pussy old daughter. And her husband King Henry desperately wants a boy already. Because he totally wants a drinky buddy to take to the local pub when he turns 18. Instead of having to talk about yucky period cramps with a girl and stuff. Anyway. Then we cut to five months earlier. Where it turns out she's now pregnant for a fourth time after already having one daughter and also having miscarried twice before. And so he's desperately trying to cook her fella up a boy before Henry totally gives up and chops her noggin off. Though not sure why the Caucasian King of England would want a mixed race child no matter the gender given England was still super racist back then and didn't even let him vote or play in the NBA and she. But he's so desperate for an heir that he promptly tries to pump a twin into her to bump up the odds. And before you can say... Holy interracial sexy time, Batman. We cut to the next morning, as some gammony bloke called Tommy Cromwell waffles on about disbanding a bunch of monasteries. But the first black queen of England, what was the black but now is because reasons, so gets distracted by petty jealousy, watching her husband laugh and joke around with a pretty white girl in the distance. So trying to impose her authority and remain remotely relevant, she barges her way between them to show she's proper good with horses and all. But unfortunately, this horse is a right raging racialist, and much like my boomer granddad, it totally freaks out when approached by an African. Oh hell no! Later, Anne's brother called George brings her a gift from his travels. Though also unfortunately, it's just a boring ass book. And worse, a friggin' Bible rather than the new Hunger Games sequel what she really wanted to read. Though turns out it is kind of special, as it's the first full Bible written in English. So now everyone can read the word of God in their own tongue. Instead of presumably having to read it in traditional Latin or pop-up picture form. Anyway, turns out she's a batty Bible basher herself. So she's proper loving it, bro. And promptly makes her young love rival Jane Seymour read out a psalm whilst passively aggressively intimidating the poor broad. Nice. The next morning... That Cromwell fella turns up in her bedchambers to confirm that the Dissolution Act to disband all the monasteries and nick all their funds has provisionally been agreed by Parliament. And all they need now is the King to totally pull his finger out and approve it in she. But because she's a bleeding heart liberal, she now wants to send some of that dosh to charitable endeavours. Like fixing up the bleeding potholes in the road and presumably funding local trans charities and stuff. But Crommy boy just scoffs. I just can't believe he's having to take orders from a race change fanny what can't even act. And so she's just lucky she's totally pregnant with the King Sprog, or else she wouldn't be remotely relevant. You have no authority here. No authority at all. Later, the stunning and brave first black queen of England, what was a black but now is because reasons, takes little Jane out for a one-to-one -one girly chat. Which mostly just involves passively aggressively threatening her again, and also reminding her of her place. And just when you thought this show couldn't get more unnecessarily provocative and needlessly offensive just for the sake of it, they go and make a pious and actual God-fearing Queen of England indulge in a gay kiss. No way! Yes, bloody way. And although I'm not usually one to complain about a bit of interracial lesbo action on my TV screen, I can't really help but die inside when witnessing the complete bastardisation of history and current day perversion of my country's cultural legacy. But anyway, she returns to find that dopey king bloke what she totally chose to marry has been in a terrible horse riding accident. And before she can say, when I said I wanted you to be a bit more super, I didn't mean a Christopher Reeve type mega cripple. Bruh. She has to go calm the call in the king's absence and promptly uses a new opportunity to send her love rival Jane Seymour away on a quote diplomatic mission abroad. Given she's threatened by her pretty looks and I assume white privilege of some sort. So because he's a straight white man with a bad case of male fragility. A recovering King Henry promptly has his horse beheaded after giving him a gammy leg and almost crippling him worse than Ricky Berwick on a good day. 
an act which only serves to heighten Anne's paranoia and stressful, haunting nightmares. Especially after he then tells her not to bother coming to his bedchambers tonight. Because she has one job to cook him up in air. So she'd better concentrate on doing just that and shut up about it already. The next day, her stuffy sister-in-law Jane Berlin, who's plagued with a bad case of constant resting bitch face, then kills the party mood stone dead by saying there's totally rumours going around that Henry was seduced into his current marriage to Anne and potentially via hoodoo voodoo and black magic witchcraft and she... And she just can't believe that peeps are talking behind her back and also being racist by implying she's bewitched a white man into marrying her fine black ass just for a better position in life. Nor that this clearly African yet supposedly English Queen of England is getting stitched up by meddling honky bird. <coughs> anyway, she soon heads off to smack her bitch up. And soon blows a fucking gasket when she finds that dutty hoe sitting prim and proper in her hubby's lap. And says you're supposed to be on a diplomatic mission abroad, bitch. So naturally, she snatches away her necklace and then gives her a thumping backhand for good measure. And before you can say, I can't believe these woke writers wrote a scene that perpetuates the angry black woman stereotype. She's now so toxic and hate-filled that even her own baby wants to get the fuck out of her pronto. And after suffering yet another miscarriage for the third time in a frigging row, her brother tries to console her given she's now more screwed than a Clinton whistleblower. But hilariously just ends up adding salt to the wound by revealing that the deceased infant was in fact the heir Henry wanted after all. <sighs> and after realising her hubby ain't even bothered to come check on her after going through a traumatic early labour and would instead rather hang about with some freckly flues in her back garden, she desperately throws on some super tight clobber to go make sure the king ain't doing a bunch of bad things and replacing her with some young white tart. And still bleeding from a recent emotional and physical trauma, she arrives too late to join her husband on his trip to Parliament in Westminster and instead just collapses in the street. And soon crying about how it's totally pointless fetching a doctor now that she's failed in her one job of delivering a healthy baby what ain't totally deaded. And will now likely end up on the literal jobbing block. Oh shit, not good. And we end on the sight of a rather doomed queen. As the camera pans down toward her horrified face and also her race changed boobies. And thus providing the one saving grace for this show to even exist at all. And that's it. That's the first Ebby. Though my favourite part was when the stunning and brave first black queen of England, what wasn't black but is now because reasons, said, I am not so great in age. And from the looks of things, not quite so great in acting either, love. Damn! But honestly, this show must have the most historically illiterate casting director in TV history. Because I don't really know what's worse. Ray swapping a real life infamous Queen of England, or making the iconic King Henry VIII no longer fat or even ginger. Liberties! But anyway, that's a blot and that's a lot. Considering that male thing, so you don't miss the roast of episode 2 when it drops. Tell me if you like this show in the comments, if you have time, and I'll see you in the next one.